Matheson and Blue and Damage. What a week it's been over here at Hollywood Unlocked. I have burnt the internet down with the Kanye West interview. And you know, a lot of y'all out there were shaming me for not releasing this interview fast enough. Jason, let it go, let it go. Chris Jenner paid so you can't do it. Let me tell y'all something. Chris Jenner, uh, the Klansman, the Illuminati, whoever you think <laughs> out there don't like me or black people could not stop what Jason Lee do. I have to say, uh, shout out to Kanye West for giving me the exclusive where we got into a deep dive of everything. As you know, we've talked about on this show when I dropped the two clips that went super viral that we we had a conversation not only about the altercation um, with the paparazzi and the the, uh, the the argument with his cousins that were caught by uh, the, inter- the paparazzis, but we also got into his relationship fatherhood we got into the red hat and his uh his fight with the culture we got into all things yay and i have to tell you the internet has had a lot to say and now that the internet has seen the actual interview in full everybody is talking blue thank you so much for writing the op-ed on that piece what were your thoughts in watching the interview in full um my thoughts were oh man am i really about to give kanye another chance i think i am um I think a lot of folks are are mad at Kanye and they have valid reasons and even he admits to that. But I think that you were able to show the regular Kanye, the human Kanye, that when we say we missed the ODA back, I feel like we got a glimpse of what we thought that was. But I also saw a father who was in the middle of a battle for his children. And that's what actually spoke to my heart. I didn't see the all the fanfare that that he loves. I saw a father who really just wants to make sure that he can raise his children. And that was the most powerful part of the interview for me. Mm-hmm. Well, Damage, did you see the interview? Yeah, man. Uh, just to piggyback off what Blue said, as a father myself, it don't matter how much money you have, how much fame you have, that um, that's something you feel in your soul, man. You know, Kanye's fighting for his family. Um, he's fighting to be uh, considered human. Like he said, everybody's putting him in his box. And he's also put himself in the box, to be fair. You know, he calls himself the Steve Jobs, you know, the present day Steve Jobs and everything. And people forget that Kanye West has regular everyday problems so even though like you jason when you talked about him not, uh, not having security i was afraid too but it's like kanye is a regular person and i feel like this interview helped people see that that he has regular emotions he has fights with his families just like i do just like you do just like blue does well i will say you know when he says he's the modern day steve jobs you know when you really unpeel and unpack what he's saying and this is one thing that i learned being able to talk directly to him and sit there with him and study his body language and study his reaction to the comments that were coming out of my mouth and the questions that he didn't prepare for. Neither one of us were prepared for the interview. It literally happened just like that. You know, the one thing that I will say is that, and I've told him this, I now get where the confusion lies with what you're saying and the analogies that you're drawing up, especially in a world where mass media does poke to get that one soundbite that can drive a bunch of traffic because we are in a traffic and click-based business, right? When he says he's the modern day Steve Jobs, I don't know anybody else in the culture that's had more success in creating culture. Think about it, his assistant was Virgil. Virgil went on to be the men's director at at Louis Vuitton and as he talked about in the interview, uh, merging high fashion or luxury brand with streetwear, right? Then you look at, you know, uh, the other people that are around him that he's put in positions like Jerry Lorenzo, who I met in LA as a promoter, who's now the owner of Fear of God, worth 75 million and whose clothes I love from the texture to the design. So, you know, he has had a lot of influence. His shoes are on everybody's feet. His music is in everybody's phone. And so he is the fabric of the culture. And what I learned in talking to him, what I told him was, you speak very abstract. You're not a linear communication type person. Like I may say, hey, how is the weather outside? You may say it's cold or hot. That's a very linear, just straightforward conversation. He's very abstract in how he thinks and how he tries to describe things. I think sometimes there's a lot of grandiose uh, uh, examples that, that we cannot connect with because we see or hear a name or an image and we identify it being either the most negative or the most beloved that we can't make a human connection to the idea of what that is. And that's what I got from him. And I do love the fact that, and I've said this to him privately and I'll say it to you and I've said it to the audience that I appreciate that he gave the opportunity and the privilege to have such a conversation to a black media outlet that is not part of that mass media world. And so shout out to him for doing that because there's a lot of people who've said no. Can I just call out the audience though for the hypocrisy? This was a huge get, right? Because there are a lot of folks who cannot stand Kanye West who have Yeezys. And I need y'all to reconcile that with you and your Lord. And so 
His impact is undeniable and a black media outlet being allowed to have a conversation with someone who is objectively as culturally relevant as he is should have been a big win. But I cannot tell you how many spicy messages I got from folks who were like, I can't believe that y'all sat down with Kanye and y'all are giving him a platform to push out his hate and X, Y, and Z. And to the folks who are saying that, I need you to ask yourself a question. Deep down, do you believe Kanye West loves the black community? Because if you think he is a horrible person and he hates the black community and he's the devil and we should write him off, fine. I, I, I can let you have that. But if you deep down think he loves the black community, but he said some hurtful things and he wants to find a way to make it right, what is wrong with giving him an opportunity to do so? We need to create room for evolution and reconciliation. And those of you who were mad at us for even letting him speak to us, even though the conversation was very nuanced and balanced, shame on you because you're what's wrong with cancel culture. Well, you know, mm -hmm. I saw another thing too, you know, a lot of outlets that would either super zoom in on my content or cut me out of the video with Madonna and all that. I know how media works. And more importantly, I know how social media works, but I actually believe the audience is smarter than that. And I've seen the comments where people have said, Jason Lee, that was his video, or Jason Lee was in that, or this belongs to Hollywood Unlocked. And as you know, with the videos on his way to his kid's birthday, I licensed those with Shutterstock and those who ran it without my permission or tried to cut me out, we sent them a bill. So ultimately I can play this internet game with the best of them, run me my money, uh, and also takedown notices will be sent out so you will have it removed. But again, I'm now thinking about how many interviews I turned down. I turned down an interview with Donald Trump when he was being elected for the uh, uh, for president because I just did not believe that he was going to win. And I honestly didn't align with his views. And I turned it down because emotionally I didn't believe it was right. And I've turned down not talking to uh, Takashi 6 9 because I have my personal feelings of what he is or what he represents. And those haven't changed and won't change. But I'm in the business of talking to people. So I have reached out to Takashi 6 9 this week. I have reached out to Megan this time. And I have reached out to Cardi B. And I have reached out to Trump. Because I'm in the business of having conversations. Now, I don't know that my conversation with Kanye will be the same tenor as my conversation with a Trump. But either way, I'm in the business of having conversations. And I do believe we have to get to a place where people show up and support the people that are driving the culture. You know, I think the thing that I'm having trouble reconciling with is to the black audience. What do you want? What That's you what want? I was just going to say. Exactly. Do you I want him to fix it or that. not? What do you want? First, I you don't like Kanye, cancel him, but you wear his shoes and listen to his music. You don't like me, and you may not show up for an interview that the whole world's talking about, but what do you want? I was just going to say that. Like, who do y'all want Kanye... Kanye needs to express himself, right? Like any regular person. Who is he supposed to speak to? You know what I'm saying? Who, When he did it at his concerts, he was ranting, shut up and just play the music. Who do you want him to sit down with? Should he sit down with people that are not like him? He's sitting down at a, a black platform talking about his issues as a black father and a black man moving through this universe as himself. You know, there's not a lot of people that can relate to Kanye West. So a lot of things he say will be abstract, will be off the wall, but at the end of the day, I don't care what he does and what he says. Uh, I think culturally he's given so much to us. And I think the least we can do is listen and give him a platform to feel safe to express himself. So I'm glad you were able to do that, Jason. Well, you know, the conversation that me and Ye had about the audience's reaction to the interview was pretty interesting because, you know, he's over in Paris. And we we had a conversation actually this morning where I was saying to him that what I really appreciated the most, and I want people to get this. What I appreciated the most was that he did not tell me what I could not ask. He did not not answer what I asked. And he didn't call me with one edit. And that to me, when you think about the upper echelon of the industry, the Beyonce's, the Rihanna's, the Jay-Z's, the Kanye's, those brands that are at such a mass level where they have obligations to corporate America and corporate infrastructure, um, they're very managed. And for him to do that, in spite of his publicist on the phone telling him not to do the interview, to do it and to not try to control it, I thought was amazing. I texted him yesterday and I said, can you please put this on your Instagram story? And he did. And he shared it with the world. Uh, and Blue, you wrote an amazing op-ed piece. And I just have to tell you, y'all, that's what ba Black excellence is. This cancel culture thing is ridiculous. I, I'm glad to be a part of the pendulum swinging the other way because accountability culture is what we need. And, and, and that, that, that culture is here, but this whole idea of we going to cancel can't people no. And I've been a part of that too. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite 
and say, I remember when uh, 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 Doja Cat did that stupid stuff on the internet with the white boys, I say, cancel her. I think that that was the dumbest, most ridiculous, embarrassing <laughs> thing that I've ever seen from a female artist, I think. But, you know, she has the, she should have the opportunity to be held accountable for that and move on. And so I'm checking myself while I'm checking y'all. You know what's crazy, too, is nobody on this show is a yay apologist, right? None of us are saying that anybody's pain around what he said previously was invalid. So the fact that we are letting you have your feelings, and Jason, I love on the on the um, interview, you asked him all the difficult questions. You weren't being a yes man. You weren't throwing him softballs. You were asking him all the greasy things that a lot of people who are in the comment section would have loved to have asked him. And I love that he said, I take accountability for those who I've hurt. So again, I asked you, if a black man has hurt you and is taking accountability for it and wants to sit at the table to figure out how to make it right, where is the issue with that? That's exactly the best case scenario.